can you find my son in me in the world? I miss my brother. We just don't know where to turn. In the last year, over 4,000 people from across the UK have contacted the long lost family team. Do you know what her full name would be? Asking us to find their missing family. I tried to write so many times to my brother. There's this one, this one, this one. How could a mum give up their child? It's been like an obsession. For 20 years, it's been an obsession. Using trained intermediaries, DNA experts and investigators all over the world, we find people that nobody else could trace. You've got five other siblings. Five? We uncover incredible family secrets. Don't tell me she was there. She was. And answer questions that have haunted entire lives. I knew there was going to be twists and turns. I, I said it. This week... Oh, my God! One woman's extraordinary search for her mother that spans continents. Hello? Hello, Kathleen. It's Nikki here. Straddles different backgrounds. My grandmother said, well, I'll accept anything, but I won't accept a black child in the family. And through scientific testing, reveals layers of family she never even knew existed. When we took your DNA, we got another match. You didn't? Yeah, we did. This story begins in London with a woman who, having lost her adoptive mum at the age of three, has always longed to find her birth mother. Well done, Dijon. You're good at this. <laughs> when I had my own children, that's when I really knew what I'd missed. It's really true that if you're not cared for, if you haven't got a mother, you don't get loved. I realised that that's how I'd felt my whole life. Would you be happy for me to find my mum? Yeah. Yeah? You think she'd like to well, meet you? Right. Yeah. 62-year-old right. community worker Kathleen Fraser-Jackson was adopted when she was three months old in London. I like your lipstick. Thank you. It's very nice. After her mum passed away when she was just three, Kathleen was brought up by her father and his new wife. It wasn't a happy childhood. I didn't feel part of the family. I honestly thought no one cared. No one cared about me. At the age of five, Kathleen was sent away to boarding school. Years on, she went to see a school counsellor, and it was then she made a shocking discovery. He was reading the file, and as he was holding it, one page had dropped, and you could just see Kathleen Lindsay Roberts' adopted child, and I just looked. The mum Kathleen had grieved for hadn't been her birth mother. Finding out I was adopted made me realise that, yeah, I'd lost two mums. It made me feel like a nobody. You really are nobody's child. So I wanted to find her, my birth mother, the person who I belong to. Kathleen spoke to her father who explained she'd been adopted from a 25-year-old white woman, also called Kathleen. He said, I was handed over at West Hampstead train station when I was six weeks. And my mum, my natural mother, was crying. It was a bit of hope, you know, that maybe there was someone that cared. When she was old enough, Kathleen accessed her adoption file which included details of this address in West Kensington. We spent the first six weeks of my life here. <laughs> I wondered if she'd take me to the window and rock me up and down in front of the window looking out. 
bless. What a story these walls could tell. The file also shed light on her mother's situation at the time. From what I understood, my birth mother was a society lady who um, had got pregnant for a Jamaican man who was here studying and her mother, my grandmother, said, well, I'll accept anything, but I won't accept a black child in the family. The 1950s saw record levels of immigration to the UK, and with it, a marked increase in interracial relationships. But couples faced staunch opposition. Young women, pregnant with non-white babies, were often forced to give them up, and organisations like the one Kathleen was adopted through found parents wanting to raise mixed-race children. I feel really sad that things could have been different, but then at that time they couldn't. Today is the first time Kathleen's visited anywhere that links her to her mother. Hello. And standing outside, she's come to the attention of a current resident. This is where my mum lived. Uh -huh. And this is where I was brought when I was born. OK. It was sometime in the 60s when my mother bought the house here. But the rooms were all rented out. So, you know, maybe your, your mother was renting one of the rooms. OK, thank well, you. thank you. You're yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Sadly, the house owner has no further information about former occupants. So it's here the trail ends. Nanny, mm. go hug. I'm here, come in. Although Kathleen's thrown herself into raising her five children and 12 grandchildren, something is still missing. If I'm honest, my mother is in my thoughts all the time. Finding my birth mother would give me that sense of the love I'd missed. All the rejection, the loss, the worthlessness would be just erased. And I think that if I don't do it, then I carry this sadness. Oh, I don't want to carry this anymore. When Kathleen came to us, she knew her birth mother's name, also Kathleen, and that she'd been 25 in 1956 when her daughter was born. Usually, this is enough information to start to trace someone, but when we look for any records, we drew a blank. We needed to approach this search differently, so we took a sample of Kathleen Jr's DNA and put it on an online database. If anyone related to her mom had also submitted their DNA, we should be able to identify her biological family. Amazingly, almost immediately, we got a hit, a match so close, it could only be a half-sibling, a woman called Alison Hargreaves, living more than 3,000 miles away. We got in touch with Alison, and it was then we discovered the incredible news that her mother Kathleen's still alive. Aged 87, she's the oldest person we've ever tracked down. It was 62 years ago that Kathleen gave up her baby for adoption in the UK. I wonder if coming to Canada is a way of putting the past behind her, or whether she's ever thought about her missing daughter. Great, thanks. Kathleen lives with her husband of 61 years and close by to her children, Alison, and her son, Graham. Hello? Hello, Kathleen. It's Nikki here. OK. First of all, it's very, very nice to meet you. Thank you. How do you feel about the fact that Kathleen is trying to find you? I was surprised. I mean, it's amazing because I never imagined or thought that it would happen, especially not here in Canada. How soon after Kathleen was born did you come here? A few months. So was it good to have a fresh start? That was what I needed. After 
I got pregnant, I told my mother. She didn't want me to keep the baby. At that time, there was still a stigma. I wanted Kathleen to have a proper home with two parents and a proper life, which I wouldn't be able to give her. And what happened to Kathleen's father? At the time, I don't think I wanted to get married, particularly. He was from Jamaica. My mother went to people in London, and they put her in touch with Mrs Roberts. Kathleen's adoptive mother. Yeah, she wanted to adopt a mixed-race child. I remember meeting her to hand her over and how she looked at, the, at Kathleen in the buggy and the expression on her face, I've always remembered it. It was just absolute, pure happiness. I think I cried a lot for about two months. I knew her, like I told her. You can't forget that. But what I liked was that I, when I gave her up, it was making another woman happy. Well, I've got some quite sad news. Mrs Roberts died when Kathleen was three years old. Oh, she did? Oh. Yeah, that would have been hard for Kathleen. Yeah. She then felt that she'd lost two mothers. But she's OK. She is now. She's got five children. Really? Good heavens. Twelve grandchildren. Oh, my goodness. Twelve? And she's something of a figurehead in the community where she lives. Oh. Wow. OK. And she's been looking for you for a long time. I've often wondered if she looks like me. Let me show you a photograph of her. Wow. Good heavens. She's even got my nose. <laughs> she looks happy. <sighs> Are you okay? This makes me think about the first child I had. Jean. Jean. That was her name. I was only about 18 or 19 when she was born. I felt I had to give her up for adoption as well. Who was the father? He was also from Jamaica, and we, she wasn't adopted until she was six months. You, you must have really bonded with your child. Oh, yeah. That was hard. Would you like us to try and find her? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Wow. Londoner Kathleen Fraser Jackson has been searching for her birth mother for over 40 years. What we didn't expect when we traced her mother Kathleen, living over 3,000 miles away in Canada, was the shock revelation that she'd given a second child up for adoption, another daughter she's asked us to find. Whilst we get all the information we can to try and help with that search, I'm on my way to see Kathleen Jr. Kathleen has lived for years not knowing who her birth mother is, where she is, or even if she's still alive. But I can now tell her that we've found her mother and that we're starting a whole new search for her sister, Jean, too. Hi, Kathleen. How are you doing? Are you all right? Yes, thank you. Ah, thanks for seeing me. Hmm. You had quite a tricky time of it as a kid. And so tell me about looking for your birth mother. I used to find it really difficult. I kept coming to dead ends. That's the thing. You know, you hope against hope because it's not too late. How old would she be now? 87. So you're yeah. hoping? I am, yeah. But, you know, at the same time, you have to prepare yourself. Mm. You know, yeah. Well, she's alive and well. You found your mum. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Does she want to see me? She really wants to see Does me. she? Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. I've got a mum. <laughs> I've got a mum. You have. She couldn't keep you on her own, being a single mum with a mixed-race child. That She felt she was doing the best thing for you. Yeah. For you. I had that feeling. She met your adoptive mother. Apparently, she laid eyes on you and she 
never stopped looking at you from the minute she saw you. And so she was happy. She felt you'd gone to a home that, that was really loving. Yeah. So obviously very, very sad that, that your adoptive mother had died. She didn't know that. Oh. So she'd love to meet you. She lives in Canada. Oh, wow. She left the country. This is your mum. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hi, Mum. Yeah. She's oh, written you a few words. She yeah. hasn't. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Dear Kathleen, I was delighted when I learned you were looking for me. I have thought of you over the years. When you were born, I could not have given you the life you deserved. I hope you understand my decision. I am very much looking forward to getting to know you. We have so much to talk about. Kathleen, your birth mother. That must have been hard for her to write, really. Mm. And she's got two kids. <laughs> oh! You've got Do they brother, know about me? Brother and a sister, and they've known about you all their lives. You've never been a secret. Alison and Graham. Alison and Graham. And there's one bit of information. So your mum did have another child at 20, also with a Jamaican father. No! A little girl. I've got a big sister. Jean. Jean! Mixed race. You've both been adopted and she has asked us if we would look for Jean. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> As Kathleen planned her trip to Canada, we started our search for Jean. Kathleen Senior told us that Jean was born in 1950, six years before Kathleen Junior, in a mother and baby home in Aberdeen. Now, because Jean was adopted, we needed to use a specialist intermediary to find her new name. They discovered she was still called Jean, but with a new surname, Thompson. And with this information, it didn't take long for them to track her down. I've come to Edinburgh to meet Jean. She was only six months old when she was adopted. Has Jean thought about her mother? And how will she feel about the fact that she wasn't the only baby to have been given up for adoption? Hi, Jean. How are you doing? Yes, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Shall we have a chat? I can come in. <laughs> Thanks for having me. You're most welcome. What does it mean to you that your mother's come looking for you? It's been something I've wanted for really all my life. I've always felt I've got a mother somewhere and this wanting her, wanting to know her. It was hard. Was it? Oh, it was hard. In what way? I was adopted by white English middle-class parents, but then, unfortunately, their, their marriage broke down and my adopted mother left. How old were you? I was three. I was three. Dad didn't deal with the fact that we were mixed race. I know I've always wanted to get an idea of who I am inside, my bloodline. Well, your mother, Kathleen, had a relationship with a Jamaican guy. Jamaican? My goodness. OK, I didn't know that. She wanted a better life for you. She's always thought of you and wants to know how you've been. I'm so good to hear that. There's so much I want to know. Kathleen now lives in Canada. <gasps> oh, my God. 
Mm. She's been married for 61 years. And you've got siblings as well. Alison and Graham. Goodness me. I, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> is this really happening? Well, I do have something else to tell you. You were not the only baby that your mother, Kathleen, gave up for adoption. She had a relationship with another Jamaican man and had a little baby who is called Kathleen. No, I am speechless. Her adoptive mother died when she was three. So how much in common is, is that? <laughs> it's you, two. I can't... You've both lost two mothers. Jeepers. Jeepers. You're both of Jamaican heritage. <gasps> A sister. Just like me. I couldn't be happier about anything. Are you ready to see a photograph of her? Oh, God, yes. That is your sister. What? My goodness, she looks like me. <laughs> My mother. <laughs> This is more than all the gold in the world. It's my family. My family I've wanted all my life. Hello? Kathleen, hi. It's uh, Nikki here. Hello. Listen, I've got some news for you. Just to say that... We have found Jean. Oh, you're kidding. Good Lord. Oh, wow. Good heavens. I'm, I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. Well, it's incredible. She's absolutely thrilled. So she cannot wait to meet you. Good Lord. Wow. I just am lost at a loss for words, but it's great. Very great. It's wonderful news. Both your daughters are going to come to Canada and they're going to meet you there. OK. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Think of all the Christmas cards I can send. Yes. Put the post office back in business. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big day. It's a big yeah. day. Big day. Big yeah. day for you. Right. After spending 62 years without any connection to her birth family, we've not only been able to find Kathleen Fraser Jackson's birth mother, but her half-sister, Jean, too. Hello? Yeah? Guess what? They found my sister. Can you believe it? <laughs> wow! Kathleen's filled her children in on her extraordinary news. And now, she's travelling to Canada to meet her family for the first time. I'm gonna make you love me. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. How I feel. I cannot imagine what this is gonna be like. I'm going to meet my mum and my sister. This is epic. Okay. Now let's see if it closes. Ready to go. The sisters have decided to meet each other first, the day before being reunited with their mum. Jean's made the three and a half thousand mile journey from her home in Edinburgh to be here. I still can't take it in, in a way. Before this day's end, I'll have a sister. <sighs> Jean and Kathleen are getting together at Kathleen's hotel. I'm going to meet my big sister. <sighs> my big sister. <gasps> How can you explain something that means so much? that you never thought was going to happen.
my gosh, you let me. <laughs> Looking at myself, <laughs> big sister, <laughs> your little sister. I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. I, I'm just yeah, looking yeah. at you, and I'm looking at all here. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And that's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, to have because I didn't have that no. growing up. And, and you, you didn't have that. Adopted people one, don't yeah. have... No. We don't have that. You don't know who you look like. And you're like. always aware mm. that, you're, that you're different. Yeah. That's what I felt, yeah, anyway. Different. Somehow, even as a child, you just know... Um, that you don't fit in, sort no, of. No. Know. No. No, you don't. <laughs> Something I've wanted forever. When I first saw Jean, I couldn't believe it. I just kept looking at her. She's everything that I would want my big sister to be. It was one of the most amazing moments of my life. A sister I'd always wanted and a sister that, that resembles me. Because like you, I lost my, my adoptive mother at three. At three as well? At three, yeah. So you don't remember being mothered? Not at all. Yeah. I know, I just want, I just... <laughs> it's strange how we've got that similarity, but now we're together, you know, we've got each other, and that's how it's, that's how it's going to be. Now I can't believe that tomorrow we are going to meet um, our mother. What do you think she's going to make of us? I think she's going to be a very lucky lady. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. Yeah. My goodness. I've. It's just <sighs> now. I was amazed that they wanted to find me. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. It was comforting because when you give a baby up, you don't know how they will think when they find out. There's a look that only your mother can give you. Um, I'm hoping to see that, that, that look. I know that it's okay. It's okay. Just so looking forward to, to see my mother. She hasn't seen me for 68 years. I want to hear her voice, see her face. At last. Yeah. <sighs> okay, I'm ready. Both of us have gone without so much. We've got a lot of shared experience. So it's right that we go together. <laughs> You've been waiting a long time for this, right? Yeah. Forever. 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 So let's sit down. <sighs> so, this is amazing. The way that oh, I feel God, is yeah. that I was... I was nurtured in you. 
you carried me for nine months. So, I don't know, for me, it's like, that's where I came from. You know, obviously, I would think of you, you don't forget having a baby, right? You never you forget never having forget, a baby. never forget, no. Mm. I just hoped that you were having the, the life that mm. I thought you should have. Yeah. This is, this is amazing, isn't it? It's a yeah. miracle. It really feels is. like a miracle. This actually means everything. It's just absolutely great. It's really lovely to know I am somebody's child. To be sitting just near my mother and to hold her hand, that's what I always wanted to do, just hold my mother's hand. I got some gifts. Kathleen? And that's Jean. Hope you like it. Oh. My birthstone. Oh, this is lovely. We've hit it off beautifully. Amazing. There you are. There's Alison. Ah! <laughs> Sister. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, she looked like uh, <laughs> Kathleen. <laughs> I just felt at home. It was easy, you know, it was right. Look at this sun. The sun's come out for us. Miraculously, even this reunion wasn't the end of Kathleen's search. We were about to uncover a whole new side to her family that no one could have expected. Kathleen Fraser Jackson came to us searching for her birth mother, but we also managed to track down a half-sister, Jean, who'd been adopted too. Normally, this is where our search would end, but before we could close Kathleen's case file, something incredible happened. The online database we'd added her DNA to came up with a second match, only this time it wasn't on her mother's side. This was someone from her birth father's family. Kathleen knew nothing about her birth father, not even his name, so this was truly astonishing. Our team used genealogical experts who made contact with the match, and we discovered that Kathleen has a half-brother, four years younger than her, Teddy. And what's more, Teddy lives here in the UK, only seven miles from Kathleen. Teddy was raised by their father in Jamaica and has lived in London for 29 years. Kathleen thinks that the search for her family is over and has no idea there's even a possibility of finding anyone on her father's side. But what about Teddy? Is he aware of Kathleen's existence? And how will he feel about having a new sister in his life? Okay, nice to meet you. So, here we are. So how much of a surprise has this been? It's a, it's a mix, big surprise, a big surprise. Did you know about Kathleen? Never, never knew. It's shocking. Well, and what's so wonderful is that never in a million years would she have thought that we would be able to find anyone on her father's side. I feel joyful, I feel a lot of joy. But I was just sad on my father's side, just thinking that he never get to know her. He passed away two years ago. I'm so sorry, this must be very raw still. Yeah, it was. It's, I mean, it's still raw to me. Yeah, I know this a lot. What was he like? He was a loving father. He used to take the hungry from off the street and feed them. That's what the type of person he was, you know. It's incredible because Kathleen herself, she's a great figure in her community. Okay. She helps a lot of people who are less fortunate. This was my dad. As well. This was my dad. And I know my sister as well. Be happy. As well. How many sisters do you have? I've got four sisters. 
My father was a family man, you know, and we just love family. Would you like to see a picture of Kathleen? Yes, I would. I would love to. You ready? Yes. OK, all right. Seeing her in this picture. It's like a noir. That's the feeling I'm getting. Yeah, I would love to meet her. This is a first for Long Lost Family. Never before have we set out to find one side of a searcher's family, only to unwittingly uncover the other. As Kathleen had so little information about her birth father, she just didn't even consider looking for any relatives on his side of her family. So, as I catch up with Kathleen about her trip to meet her mother and sister, I have a surprise for her. Hi, Kathleen. How are you doing? Lovely to see you. So you went to Canada? I did. What was it like? It was the most exciting, overwhelming mm. experience of my life. We just clicked. We just connected. It was just really wonderful, absolutely wonderful. That's so lovely. But I have got to tell you something quite big. When we took your DNA, we got another match. You didn't? Yeah, we did. And this time, it's on your father's side of the family. It's not your father. I'm really, really sad to tell you. Your dad's passed. I thought so. But... <laughs> we... We found his son. <laughs> He's got a brother? Yes. Teddy. Teddy! He's four years younger than you. Oh, gosh. He lives in Shepherd's Bush. No! West London, yeah. I can't even believe this. I was living round the corner. He didn't know about you. At all. And is he Jamaican? <laughs> Teddy gave us something to give to you. <laughs> OK. Whoa. It's a picture of your dad. Oh, oh, gosh. Your dad's name was Byron Burton. Byron Burton? Byron Burton. There's a picture of him with Teddy on his lap. Ah! <laughs> Look at my dad. And I've got such a nice picture of Teddy now. It's your brother. Ah! <laughs> oh, my goodness! Oh! <laughs> he looks great, right? <gasps> oh, my goodness! He's got locks! Can I ask you something? How important is it to connect with that Jamaican side of your family. Oh. This is something that's, that's, that's really deep. It's like now I've got my own history. He has written you. Oh words. my gosh. Ow! <laughs> Dear Kathleen, this family is very important to us. And having another sibling fills us with happiness. It does make me sad our father was not able to meet you. We see this as an opportunity to make up for precious lost time and to see you, our blood, for the first time. I can't even believe it. There's so much love coming at me right now, I feel okay. I'm going to burst. Just three days after we gave Kathleen the shock news of a brother on her father's side, the siblings are meeting for the first time. I don't even know what to feel. It's just so important that I don't want to... I almost feel like I don't want to mess this up. I hope he likes me. 
Thank you. <laughs> right. Let's go. How are you? I'm fine, Nick. Good to see you. Yeah, nice. Should we go? Yeah, OK. Yeah. Thank you. How are you feeling? Special day today. And I just want to see her and meet her and hug her. I mean, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? You didn't even know your dad's name. Here we are, about to meet your brother on your father's side. It's a miracle to me. I just feel so... Excited, nervous. Um, what I want is to to know that this is here to stay. That's what I want. Fingers crossed. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Brother and sister are meeting in a cafe in West London, close to where they both live. So you're going to meet Kathleen there. Okay. All right. Yeah, thanks. All the best. OK, thank you. I'm going to say goodbye to you here. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Your brother's just down there. Good luck. things to catch up on. <laughs> I can't even believe this. I mean, I'm happy, I'm happy right now. I'm really happy. I was shocked to know that. That you had a sister? Yeah, someone was out there looking for their family, you know. And, um... I never even dreamed that I would find my dad. Two years ago, then you would have seen him. He would have been here right now. Sorry. But no, don't worry. <laughs> As we will say, be happy. Yeah. You know, that's what we will say. I think when I looked in his eyes, I knew it was going to be all right. He's a really, really, really nice guy, and it's going to be like a privilege to get to know him you know, and to know that he's my blood, you know, we share the same blood. It's like, it's great. So am I anything like what you expected? Yeah. <laughs> she has everything of my father, and she will get to know her roots, and I think that will be important to her. So this is, when he was here, he got this recorded. Mm. That's his voice you're gonna hear. His voice. Yeah, that's his voice. I might not have my dad, but I can get to know him through Teddy. She don't have to worry. As Bob Marley says, don't worry about it. Every little thing is going to be all right. What I've gained this past month, officially, I have a family, a multicultural family. 
that spans continents. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I am loved. Next time on Long Lost Family, a man seeking answers to questions he's had his entire life. I need to find an understanding of why my birth mother did what she did. And a woman searching for her little brother who discovers much more than she bargained for. I knew there was going to be a twist and turns. I, I said it. <laughs> <laughs>